Hello everybody, thanks for joining our webinar. This is the first webinar on a new uh, presentation system here. So I'll give you a quick rundown of how this system works in a second. Just see if Bob can confirm he can hear me okay. So, uh, yeah, this is a new interface here. So, um, we're going to have different components you'll see on your system. Any presentation slides I use will come up in the slide area. That should be highlighted to you now. That's the main area of the slides will come up. But a lot of this is recorded as a video, so any videos we have will be coming up in here in the video area instead. So that will enlarge and will show you the video as we play through that, and then it'll go back to the slide area. At any point during the webinar, you can use the Q&A section that I'm highlighting now. Just type your questions in there, and I will keep a monitor on them and make sure they're all responded to before I finish the webinar later on. So the most of the highlighted Q&A working, uh, Q&A section there, to ask you questions. I'm happy to answer any questions or comments you have. So a little bit different to previous webinars we've done. Just worth having a look at that. I'll go quiet for a minute while we wait for other people to join up. As usual, I won't start the webinar in earnest till one or two minutes past. Make sure we give anyone a chance to uh, Connect up if they click on the connect button is it? on the stroke of um, the hour, then we give them a minute or two to finish their login before we actually start. Don't want to miss the start. Just waiting for all the attendees to connect up. And I'll we'll start at a minute or so past the hour to make sure everyone can connect. Of the attendees, I see many of you are well known to us and uh, we speak to you frequently. So, we hope there's some good information in this, these classes for all you guys as well as for new people. Um, particularly focusing on this one about some new features in the Power Pack, which we hope you'll enjoy. So, we always try and include a range of information for newcomers that are not familiar with Advanced Deal and some tips and tricks or best practice for those who are experienced. So, we hope there'll be something for everyone. Welcome any feedback later.
just a little quick reminder that I only just connected. You would say this is a new webinar system we're using now. So um, if you're watching it, any presentation slides we have will come up in this area. This is where the main PowerPoints turn up. So you get the information is written down. Um, if we're playing a video and some of this is recorded video, that will come up in the media player area. So if I highlight that, that's the area that the video will come up. That will enlarge and shrink automatically, or should do, to show you the video at good size. And at any time during the whole presentation, feel free to ask any questions you want. Type your questions into the Q&A boxes here. I'm highlighting now. And if you type them in, I'll make sure I address every question before we shut off at the end of the webinar. So those are the three areas we really need to look at. And uh, I welcome any constructive feedback anyone might have uh, about the content or about the system. It's always good to have. I'll just give it another moment or two just to go just past the hour. So anyone who's just clicking on the connect buttons now has time to complete their login and sort themselves out. So it'll be just past the hour when I actually start a conversation. Probably shut off my webcam at that point as well. You don't need to look at me. Save some bandwidth. There are still people connecting, so I'll just give it a few more seconds before I start it. Welcome to this webinar we're calling the Advanced Steel Summer School Part 1. This time we're focusing on grids and structures. So my name is Alec Giles and you can read my bio here. The bottom line is I've been working with Greytech doing nothing but Advanced Steel now, uh, training consultancy for over 12 years. This series of webinars we thought we'd follow one project through from blank file to the finished model and being around the time of year that kids generally start going back to school we decided we'd build a school building for you. We plan to show you various tools that can streamline your modeling process and we'll particularly focus on the tools that are included in the Greytech Power Pack for Advanced Steel. There's going to be four parts in a rule. The first part, this one, is the grids and the main structure and part two will be efficiently adding all the joints to the structure Part three, we'll add the staircase you can see in the middle. And part four, 
there's three different railings that will be added to that structure to show you different abilities there. So the first step on this presentation, this webinar, is creating grids. And that's the first step in many projects that you'll need to do. So there's an image of the grids we need for our school building. And nothing too complicated, fairly straightforward in this case. But we all know that the standard advanced steel grid commands are not particularly user friendly. They're a bit awkward. They give you no visual feedback. And they're very certainly not the intuitive part of the system. So they can be a bit of a struggle even at the first step of the project. So I'm now going to show you two brand new ways to create grids based on the power pack that will help you create the grids you need here very quickly and easily. Okay, so our first task is to start a new file and create the grids that we want to use. So let's start a new file. I'll use my normal template. There we go. So there's various ways you can establish the grid you need for your building. And we've given you some new tools that we want to show you and emphasize in the Power Pack for 2023. So one of the most common ways to get a grid would be to inherit a drawing from a third party like your architect. So I'm going to simulate that for start off with. So I'm just going to insert the drawing the architect gave me with his grid. I want to put it at 0, zero because I obviously want it at the right coordinates. And I do need to explode it. I need it to be separate individual lines and so on, not a single block. So I'm going to tick the explode option there and say OK. So here we go, we have a grid. Marvellous. Now, to get these lines and things to work nicely, we can convert these lines straight into a grid now with the power pack. <clears throat> we don't need to draw over it or mess about measuring it to draw the new lines or new grids in advanced steel. We've got this new line to grid command. But we do need the lines the right length. So I'm going to just trim some off. So I'm going to use the ordinary AutoCAD trim command. I only need to do one line of each grid the right length. So I'll just do uh, the corners here. And get the other end of that one. That should do me. OK, so I've got the first line is the right length. So now I can use our new line to grid command. And the first thing it says is select the lines. So I can select everything there. It doesn't matter if I get a few things that aren't lines, so it'll ignore those. And how do I want to define the length of the grid lines? Well, I want to do all the groups the same way. And I want to do them by choosing one of the lines as setting the length of the grid. So I'll choose line. I'll say I want this line to be example and this line to be an example of the length of the grids. Now which direction does the numbering or lettering go? So I'm going to all, do all groups the same and they're going to start at the WCS origin. So this will be the, the first none and it will work out from there. And do I want to delete the original lines? Yes I do, I don't need those anymore. Now one of the powerful functions of these tools is that you can also create automatically create model views and set those model views up as cameras as well. So yes, I will have model views, please. And now to undo all of them or by a grid line. Well, I don't want to do all of them, so I'll do by individual lines. So I'll do this line. I'll just do the four outer ones, basically this line, that one, and the other end. And right click to finish that. And do I want to make cameras for those model views? Yes, I do. Marvelous, you can see the cameras there are now there have these white boxes. I'll go to the Projects Explorer. You can see I now have one one. The four different camera views. Now I obviously don't need any of these circles or text, so I can select those, select similar. Indeed. So that's one way I could get my grid. Converting lines into a grid. Much faster and easier than having to know what the architect created. I didn't need to know his dimensions. I didn't need to uh, mess about with the slightly awkward advanced steel grid commands. Just bang it in and away we go. So that's really nice. But there's another way we can do that. So I'm just going to throw that all away and start again with another new file. And I'll show you the other new command for the power pack in 2023. And we've got here a command to create multiple grids and levels all in one command. Really helpful. So I'll create that. And here you go. You can immediately see, yeah, 
let's put in a grid at the origin and we can work through the dialog box to set everything we want so I do need to know the right sizes and things on this occasion to set the right values in there so the overall size of the building and the length is 55 meters and in the y direction 22500 uh, in the x direction I'm going to use capital letters and it's got seven grid lines in the x direction and six grid lines in the y direction and there you go and you can see I've got my grid uh, but these are all equally spaced and my structure I want my final building was not equally spaced slightly different on the end here narrow corridor in the middle so we have the other pages here to set the spacings so in the x direction <coughs> I'll lock each one as I go and the first one should be 10,000 the second one 10 thousand you can see you can set this by the total distance or by the uh, intermediate distance whichever you prefer now this one's for the platform so that's going to be just four thousand and the last one is eleven thousand eleven thousand Okay. Now again, I want to create the uh, cameras and the model view, so I just tick the box there to create the model view on the first and the last one, and I'll make those cameras as well. Oops, make that the white one. First one, the last one. Take that tick out of there. Out there, there you go. So I can see that I've got the frame, the model view box on those, and get the y direction right. So axis in the y direction. I need to set these as I go as well. So that'll be five thousand for the first one. 5,000 for the second run. Third one was a narrow corridor, or not that narrow, but the corridor. So that's only 2,500. And then I've got 5,000 for the last two planes as well. And again, I'll create a model view and a camera on those grid lines. We can also do the levels going up the building. So I want a level on the first floor. So I'll just say, go to the levels page there to create levels. I don't want any basement levels, this is giving me two at negative heights, I don't want any of those, so I'll just zero there. I only need one extra floor in the positive, and that should be at 3,500. So there we go, my complete grid's finished for the whole structure. I can still change the color of these mezzanine grids or change them to a different layer. So I don't get those looking the same. And should I need to, I can select any grid. I can right click and say Grey Tech Power Pack Multi Grid and Level. So I can go back into that dialog box and edit them all again as a unit complete set of grids. I could also create plans. Let's do that. In fact, let's go into there. And for the levels, I'm going to say I want a model view on level one and the camera. And I'll have a model view on level zero and the camera so oh, I'm definitely going to want plans on those levels so let's create them and that's reverted the grids to the original layer so I'll just put them on a new layer again there we go so that's my grids and we're ready to move forward now with the next step which is to create our basic structure Okay, so before we move on to the structure, let's look at the summarize those grid tools. We've got the two new tools. We've got lines to grid. And the lines to grid tool, okay, you can select any number of plain AutoCAD lines. These lines can be in any direction. They don't have to be parallel to the axis. They can be a mixture of lines in all sorts of directions. The command will detect groups of parallel lines and make a separate grid out of each group. So you could get three, four, or five grids if you had lines going in all sorts of directions. You can control the length of the grids either uh, by the length of one of the lines or by the extremity of all the lines and you can choose either the number away from the UCS origin or you can choose the first line in the grid. You can create model views and cameras based on those grid lines or create a model view and then activates the camera properties and you can edit the labels to change them from numbers to letters or whatever after you've created the command. So that's one way of doing it. The other option we did 
well, the first one there is perfect if you're going to import uh, your grids from a third party. So you got an architect's drawing or a layout from someone else, you can import that drawing, just copy those grid lines. You haven't got to bother measuring or messing about with anything. The other command we looked at was the multi grids and levels. And this one's great if you know the dimensions and things or you haven't got anything to inherit. This creates grids in the X, Y directions at the same time and can create multiple levels all in one dialogue. So you can also create the model views based on any of those grid lines. And you can activate the camera properties for any of those model views. And should you ever need to, you can edit the whole group, all the X, Y and levels, all as one, again, as a set using that special command. So two very nice new commands to make it much easier to create your grids now. So having finished the grid, we now need to create the model of our actual structure of the building, the main building. Um, and we know there's lots of tools in Advanced Tool to do this. You can draw individual beams, you have the portal frame macro, you have the purlins macro. There are various tools you can play with to help you streamline uh, or automate some of this task. That's the structure we want to create. So you can see they got uh, different pitched roofs and two stories in the building. But uh, rather than use a mixture of different commands and mess about drawing lots of individual beams, lots of different uh, commands, you can actually create every single one of those beams all in one very powerful command, which is the Great Tech Power Pack Structure Designer. This will create all the beams you need in one macro. So let me show you how that works. Okay then, so let's have a look at how we're going to create our actual structure. And this is going to be using the structure designer from the power pack. So you can see in version 2023, the structure designer has been moved to its own vault. So click on that and get a new palette up for the structures vault. And if you haven't seen the structure designer before, here's some nice preview images and the different preset things you can create here. So the default structure is not very exciting. It's just a few simple beams. If I go on to the next page, that's quite an elaborate uh, structure using tapered beams with a bit of plates. This is one of the presets. And these are just examples, these presets, just to give you an idea of the range of things that the structure designer can create. So you can choose the preset that's nearest to what you want. And um, then you can manipulate that into whatever you like. So you can see here, there's quite a lot of variety and quite a lot of power in what the designer can create for you. I'll just show you the last couple. So some pretty big, pretty impressive stuff. I'm going to start off, I'm going to make this a bit smaller again so we can see some screen. I'm just going to use the default structure for my starting point. So after I click that, it takes a few seconds. There's a lot of work the structure designer is doing for you, so it does take a few seconds to update and do things. Don't panic. There we go. So I have a structure and I have the dialog box and you have to knock that into shape now. So one of the first things I recommend you do is set your default profiles. So what I need to do in here is choose the right beams I want for everything I'm likely to use, or at least if they're different in certain places, choose the ones you want most often. So start off with the columns and I want those to be universal columns. I scroll all the way down to UK universal column. I want 203, 203 by 52. And that position will be centered. And then we go to the rafters. And I want the rafters to be universal beam. Two five four one zero two twenty eight. And that'll be top alignment. Uh, the transverse beams will be maybe two or three one three three thirties. My column uh, purlins. I'm going to change to Stedman's Zs. 
I'm going to have 170, 15, there we go. Okay, so that's the basic section sizes I want to use. Now, as you can see, we've only got a very basic couple of portal frames in there at the moment. We need a lot of work to get those into the shape we want. So we work our way through the pages and set what we need. So we set the number of bays and so on, first of all, in the building definition page. So overall, the building has two levels. And level one is going to have one, two, three, four. And that's going to be one big bay with the platform. So it's five bays. So five bays long. And the number of rows, I can see from the grid lines, we've got six rows of frames. So that'll be six. Okay, they're certainly not all identical. But I might leave it on that just for a moment, just to get things started off. Uh, I don't want to split the column at the level I want. Instead of one column and there, one column at the top, I want one column going all the way up the height, like so. Level two. Well, level two, the hallway, the school hall with the mezzanine or the gym or whatever at the end is going to be just one high level, so it's going to be one, two, three, four for level two, four bays long. Okay. So we're not getting too bad. I want to set the uh, dimensions in this length because that's going to be the same all along the building before I change the bays to not being identical. So let's do the bay definition and I'll change the space in between the rows because it's not the same all the way along. The middle lot is a corridor, which is what narrower. So that's just 2,500 for that one. Okay, that's got everything changed all the way along the building. Now I've got those, I do now need to start changing what I've got because level two is not the same as level one. The bay five is not the same as the first few bays. I'll go back to that first thing and say they're no longer the same for everything. And I don't want the identical spacings. But doing that, setting the Y direction first, saved me having to reset that for each one of those bays in a moment. So, go to the bay definition again. Let's just check that's okay. Right, so that's good. We're not changing the spacing of the rows on any of the bays, so I'm happy with that. So then we go to the portal frames, and this is where it starts getting really interesting. So now we're going to start setting all of these up. So, it's on level one, bay one, that's this here. And I just need to set the appropriate properties. It's onto one beam because it's not a proper roof. So the height of that portal is 3,500. The width is 10 meters, that's correct. So that's all I need to set on that page. Then we go to the frame, check the members here. So the columns should be on middle. And the rafter position is top, that's correct. And the transverse beams are set, they should be set to top. Or top middle. So let's get that correct. It's looking resource. Left side, column right side also needs to be middle. Okay, so we've got the first one set. Now I can copy that. It says frame one. I want the same for all the rows. I'm not changing it as I go back through the building. So I come in here and say copy to all rows. Or copy to all, and that's talking about the rows. And then we can go along. So moving to the second floor, that would be level two, A1 still. And this is with it, going to be this portal. So I need to set the column heights first, a file. So I'm going to do the left column, should be 3,500. The right column should be 3,500. Okay, 
Now the apex, or the portal height, is going to be 4,500. And I don't want the apex in the middle. I want this to be a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to push the apex off center. Like so. Coming on. Now that's great. That's got the first sort of building uh, bay set up. Now I need to make that copy all the way along. So what I'll do, I'll go to level one. And say copy to all. And then I'll say level two, bay one, copy to all. There we go, that's looking much better. Already coming into shape quite well. Now obviously the last bay was not the same, so now although I've said copy to all, I need to go back to level one, bay five. And that's not copy from bay one anymore, that's now editable. And here we start going to the right thing. So the width of this bay was 15 meters. And the column on the left, I want that to the same height as this, so that would be 7,000. And the column on the right, I'm going to have that 5,000. And the overall height is going to be uh, three and a half plus four and a half, so that's eight meters. Something like that. There we go. Looking good. It's quick. It's easy. We'll get in there. Now we need to put in this mezzanine in the gym or school hall. So balcony that would be under the platforms page in here so here we go the platforms page and you can see here I have choices I can do the front which is this side the back which is obviously over there the left or the right this and this is outside the building I'm talking about outside the front outside the back outside the left or outside the right of that bay there is also an option for inside but if I put that one in let's go to bay 5 and I turn on inside then I can choose which portals I want, so portals 1 and 2. If I enable that, you can see I get the platform going right across the building. That's not what I want. It's not the whole bay. I don't want the whole bay to be the platform. So that's not quite what I'm looking for. I'm not going to do that one. I'll disable that. To get it just up this edge, if I said left, which you might think is interesting, that would go outside the left. So I actually go here in the middle of bay 4. So what I actually want to do is go to bay 4, and go to the right hand side to activate the one outside the right of bay 4 and that gives me a platform in here which is what I want and I can manipulate that to get the right shapes and sizes so to set that one up I'm going to go along so the height of the platform is 3500 the first beam is four meters four meters for a second beam All right so the x-axis beam should definitely be on the top for a start is going to be a UB so all the way down to UB again I didn't set this one in advance but you can still override or set them each one as you go not a big deal and the x-axis that's this direction by the way uh, the y left beam the right beam will be the same another beam choose the right size set it to top And then the okay. 
Let's change those. Uh, let's go in that way. I thought it was going to go this way. It seems to be doing that beam. So actually, the right hand beam there should be a PFC. So UK parallel flash channel. 200 by 90 by 30. I was going to choose there. That's good. Now I'll go for the other direction. So the y axis. First beam. Is going to be top level and the last beam. On that channel, actually, we don't want the um, dimension to be to the top middle. So let's just go back to that x axis, last right being. I want it that to be top. Inside, so it's on the heel or the toe of the channel. Okay. Now, again, we've set the basics up. We want to do the column now. So we can go to the advanced page here. We've got other choices here. So I want to activate some corner columns there. Let's go to corner column, enabled. There we go, let's turn them on. Just have to choose the right size for them. And on this occasion, let's go for RHS. And fifty by hundred by five. And I can go get the alignment right, let's try a little right. Yep, that's what I wanted. Good. So the last beam will be the same. Okay, rectangle whole section. Now that's got the one platform for the first bay, so now I'll copy that all to the others. So the easy way to do that is go to here, put where it says portals one and two, copy to all. But look out when you do that, because remember uh, two to three, this middle line is a corridor, it's not the same width as all the others. So it's getting a bit confused here, trying to make that five meters, then trying to make that five meters, but they're overlapping here and it's got the beam in the wrong place. So we need to go to two and three, Wait, uh, one to two, two to three, three to four. Go to the one that says three to four. And I don't want that to be copied, I want that to be editable as well, enabled. And now adjust that to match the width of that frame, and that fits in over there. So now all of those are the same all the way across, and that's what we needed. So we can set everything up, you can set all the bits you want, adjust it as you need to. You can get quite a complicated building out of that. Now, just like any other joint, we do also provide a library. So you can store what you want in the library if you're going to do similar buildings, especially good for industrial units where they tend to be just portal frames with maybe a mezzanine or um, architectural agricultural buildings. Where again, they just tend to be long on a pitch or portal frames. Just change each time you might change the width, or you might change the number of bays, but nothing too drastic is going along. So you can just change one or two um, variables in this setting and everything's the same. So I've saved my school the way I wanted it. I'm just going to load that up just to uh, make sure I got all the settings right and finish that off. So there we go. We have the finished school in there. I'm going to have a look down and there's everything set up as we want it throughout the building. 
So the structure designer, the first few times you use it, it's going to be a bit daunting, but you just need to practice a little bit with it. And you can actually achieve some pretty complicated buildings. All the beams are drawn. I couldn't draw those beams like that any faster any other way. So to review that in with the structure designer, it's a powerful comprehensive macro that can create full structures in one process. The structure can have any number of bays, any number of rows and any number of levels. And each bay, row or level can vary. You're not stuck to having them all the same. As you saw, we had the last bay completely different on that building. Each bay can have one or two rafters, so it can be a mono pitch or a portal arrangement for each bay. And you can have internal and external platforms and balconies using the platforms portion. There's a library, like any other joint, so you can recall common configurations, so easy to adjust. And other things that we perhaps didn't have time to show everything in there, there's lots more in there. So you can do curved roofs. One of the preset examples is a curved roof. And that will even place the purlins following that curve around the roof. That's really handy. So yes, you can include light gauge or cold rolled side rails and purlins on any face of the model. It can include those for you. You can use engineered or tapered beams, which are the beams made from plates and they can change profile as they go along. That's using the advanced steel tapered beam object type. Uh, those can be included in the structure designer. You can do bracing for the walls or the roofs, X or K bracing, not a problem. Just set all that up on the bracing pages. You can include openings, so you can actually add windows, door frames or gate openings to any of the faces of any of the sections on the model. Very handy. And once you've set all that lot up, you can even activate the cladding. So it will automatically put the cladding uh, on the face of the cold rolled or light gauge steel and automatically include the openings for all the windows and doors you've included. So it's really very powerful. We didn't have time to show you every possible permutation today, and we could be here for some time. So the structure designer is really good for lots of different types of structures, especially if you're doing simple buildings on a regular basis. So things like industrial units or agricultural barns, they tend to be portal frames with a mezzanine or uh, a long series of mono pitch frames so you could just load up your library entry that has the majority there and then maybe just change the height the width or how many frames and in a few moments you'll have the large majority of your structure already modeled in there just need to have a little think about the cameras again so you'll remember that when we created the grids we activated the model views and asked for cameras on those model views that's fine but there is one important thing you've got to bear in mind Let's go back and have a look at those. So I just need to go back and have a look at the cameras created with the grids again. So remember we created the grids using the power pack tools and they have automatic options to create related model views and cameras. So we've got these white borders we can see in the model here. These are the model views. And going to Project Explorer, we can see we've got these various model views created. These came with the grids. So if I try that one, that's going to be the left hand side of the building. Now they have all been set up with the views, but although they've got the cameras activated, the cameras have no other properties in there. So you won't actually get any drawings unless you remember to come in and you set these first few properties. So this one's going to be an overview. Left elevation. And choose a sensible style. I'll choose my GUK. Nice ones. So you need to go through all the six, or oh, however many cameras you've created, I've got six here, and you need to remember to set those properties. So this one's going to be an intersection, grid G. That's maybe the front, yep. So 
the ones at the far end of the building, like grid 6 or grid G, will be looking from inside the building and not reverse to be looking from outside. So they're like sections on the grid lines more than outside elevations. So keep that in mind when you're using these. You may decide to do your own cameras or something for the outside views, as you wish. And same with the levels. When it gets to the levels, it has created levels here, but the camera and model view is based on the model view, not the level. So it's this one I need to edit, properties for, for the ground. So this will be an anchor plan. And this one will be the first floor. Okay, there you go. So now I've set those up for all of the cameras, or all of those model views with the camera properties, I will now get proper drawings. So don't forget to do that. It's great to have the view created automatically for you with the grids, but you do have to still go in and set those individual properties for the camera properties for each of those model views. Okay. So, as we just said, don't forget, the grid tools create the model view and then activate the camera portion. But, well, that saves you setting up the position, the orientation, and the size of the camera. But you really have to go in and set the type, the description, the style, and the scale. If you don't set those, especially if you don't set the style, you simply won't get a drawing. So it's done half the work. It can't do all the work, so you it can't anticipate which of those other options you're going to need. So it's done the hard bit, the position, and the orientation, and the size. You need to set the uh, final things, the description, the style, especially. So we've already created a vast majority of our school building. We've created all the beams and all the grids for the entire structure, along with a number of cameras ready for the GAs later, and we've done all of that in around 30 minutes. Uh, I know that many users would struggle a bit with the grids, so it might take longer than that just to create the grids and a handful of cameras. It could easily take 30 minutes. So this is a very fast and efficient workflow once you master it. So uh, all the tools in the Greater Power Pack have been created in order to streamline or automate frequently done tasks. Most of these tools we create here are in direct response to feature requests from customers like yourselves. So we're not doing it for our benefit. We're really listening to you and trying to create things that will make your life faster and easier. So it's worth spending some time to get familiar with the tools. The first time you use the structure designer, you might find it a bit daunting. Or the first time you fiddle with the grids, you might not get it right. But just persevere for a couple of tries and once you get used to those after a few first few tries you will find your reward will be that you'll be much more efficient in future so yeah the first couple of times you might think I'm not saving anything but you will in the long run and it'll be much more productive for you so I hope you found that one interesting the next chapter in the series of four we've got all the beams we require for our structure now but we haven't got any joints so chapter two we're going to look at the most efficient way to add all the joints we need to the entire structure We'll put every single joint on. So look out for that uh, coming up shortly, and I'll see you there. Thank you very much. Okay, everybody, that's the uh, content complete. I've answered a few questions as we've gone along. If anybody has any further questions, please type them into that question box, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Once again, this is the Q&A box here. If you want any questions, you can type them in there for us 
and I will wait a few moments and answer any questions that pop up. Okay, there don't seem to be any questions appearing. So thank you everybody for your time and attendance. I hope that was informative for you and uh, you picked up some tips or tricks there. And if you'd like to have any more information on the power pack, if you don't already have it, then please talk to your nearest Grey Tech office. We'd love to discuss it with you. Okay, that concludes this webcast. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.